Hello everyone and welcome back to another video. Today we will be continuing our in-depth topic of were the peace treaties of 1919-23 to fair? So today we'll be looking at a brief overview of the main terms of the Treaty of Versailles and what article number they were, and then we will follow that through by looking at the what the Big Three wanted from the Treaty of Versailles. So let's begin. The first um, major point was the creation of the League of Nations. Article number was 1-26. to And in its main part of that was Germany and the defeated countries were not allowed to join. Article number 42 stated that the Rhineland was to be demilitarised, meaning German arm the German army was not allowed to be there. 45 meant that the Saarland, with rich coal fields, was given to France for 15 years to run as a mandate. It was technically given to the League of Nations, but they gave it to France to run it as a mandate. Then, Article 51 stated that Alsace-Lorraine should be returned to France after it was taken by Germany in a war a few years prior to World War I. Article number 80, Anschluss was forbidden, aka Germany was forbidden to unite with Austria. Article number 87 stated that lands in eastern Germany, aka the rich farmlands of Posen and the Polish corridor between Germany and East Prussia, was to be given to Poland to give them access to the sea which was part of Wilson's 14 points of the freedom of the seas. Article 100 made Danzig a free city under the League of Nations. This would, after World War II, be renamed to Gdansk, where a lot of big parts of um, later history would happen, most notably Solidarity. Article 119 stated that all of Germany's colons, colonies were to be taken away and given to France and Britain as mandates. That basically meant that they were under Britain and France, up until self-determination properly kicked in and they could choose what they wanted to be. Article 160 was that Germany's army was restricted to 100,000 men. That meant also that conscription was banned and they only were allowed to keep the men that were already in their army and the rest would be forcibly retired. Article number 181 was the Germany, German Navy was restricted to six battleships and no submarines. Article number 198 was Germany was not allowed to have an air force. So they couldn't build new planes, they couldn't have any new planes, um, so, stuff like that. Article number 231 was Germany was responsible for causing all, all the loss and damage caused by the war, aka the war guilt clause. And this was one of the most resented parts of the Treaty of Versailles, due to the fact that it isn't actually Germany who starts the war, it's Austria, Hungary and Serbia. And finally, Article 232 Germany would be forced to pay reparations, which is technically part of the war guilt clause, and that was to be decided eventually, later. And eventually it was set at £6.6 .6 billion, or 132 billion gold marks, if we're going in German currency. But, what did the big three want? Well, Britain, in public, aka okay, Lloyd George in public, wanted a weak Germany. This was due to very anti-German... Um, Pe uh, personal views by the people as they blamed Germany for the war, kind of like everyone else in Europe at the time. And in fact, uh, Lloyd George's slogan for the elections that year after World War I was Make Germany Pay. In private, however, Lloyd George wanted a strong Germany. This was due to the fact that he thought that if Germany was severely weakened, they would no longer be able to trade majorly with Germany. And if Britain couldn't trade with Germany, then the British economy would be ruined. They also were scared of communism. As we've looked at in previous videos, communism spread throughout Russia, partially due to a very weak economy and how backwards it was. Lloyd George feared that if Germany became a weak state, communism would have a perfect host to infect. He also didn't want the treaty to be too harsh on Germany, as it might cause them to seek out revenge. That went well. And... Also, he, didn't, he wanted Germany to lose its navy. This would then make the British navy dominant again. As we'll look at later on other fronts, we will see that Germany and Britain had the strongest navies in Europe, and yet they never fought. He also wanted Germany to lose its colonies, which he did get, as this would allow him to control them and spread the British Empire's influence, as at the time Britain still had a relatively decent empire. Clemenceau, however, wanted a very weak Germany to prevent war again. He was completely fearful of what Germany might do, as he didn't have the forethought to consider that if Germany was very weak, 
they would seek revenge, as the demilitarization um, was a source of major anger for the people of Germany, since their history had been deeply rooted in military, especially Prussia. He also wanted Germany to accept full responsibility for the war. So again, the war guilt clause. Major problem in the Treaty of Versailles. He also wanted very high German reparations since the economy in France was so badly damaged as their farmlands, their cities, mills, ports, so on and so forth, all damaged beyond repair, basically. However, President Poincaré wanted Germany to be broken into smaller states. So things like Prussia would be made, Berlin, all of these cities would probably become states of their own. However, Clemenceau knew that the British and Americans wouldn't agree. And, finally, he had, he had a time limit as he was under pressure from the population to make Germany pay. And again, this is another point between Britain and France. The population completely hate Germany. And they want Germany to basically be wiped off the map. If they had that option, if they could just cut Germany out of the world, they probably would have at the time. And this is so sort of drastic and completely different to what the American population thought, as even though at the time there was a anti-German um, idea, mostly caused by the fact that since most people in America at the time were Germans, ethnically, um, at the start of the war they supported Germany completely. But after reading the newspapers, the atrocities that Germany committed in Belgium what the uh, support for the Germans completely went, and in fact, but even due to this, the American populace still didn't want Germany, didn't really care about Germany, frankly, as America had been on a isolationist idea, very similar to Japan after its um, samurai age, extremely isolationist, didn't allow almost anyone to trade with them, you know, basically shut off from the rest of the world. And so, following that, America, what did Woodrow Wilson want? Well, as we've looked at it before, he wanted his 14 points to be used. He was adamant about the 14 points being taken seriously. And his main ones that he wanted to be used was to be that Poland should be made independent. Now, this does happen. And, of course, the Polish corridor happens. And this is another major humiliation to Germany because Germany is now being cut into. He also wants the League of Nations to be made. Now, this is actually quite a sensible idea he has, as it would, in theory, prevent further conflict. However, he makes one mistake. Can you guess what that is? And can you guess what all the other countries' mistakes were? To not allow the defeated countries there. And this is another reason why Germany was angry. They weren't allowed in the League of Nations, so they couldn't determine what was going on in their own country, and they weren't allowed to sign, they weren't allowed to be there for the actual Treaty of Versailles. No Germany, no Austria, no Hungary, no Bulgaria, no Turkey, none of them were allowed to be there. So, in theory, they were just expected to sign a piece of paper. They had no idea what it would do, no idea the repercussions, and it would lead to some major moments in history. For example, the Cap Putsch, which was when a man by the name of Cap, surprisingly, it's in the name, um, pushed on Berlin with the Freikorps, which was basically remnants of the German military who hadn't fully given up. And the actual Wehrmacht Republic, at the time, fled Germany, because the army would not stop them. However, the public stopped the Cat Putsch by going on general strike, since they didn't like him. And it also and also the anger towards the Treaty of Versailles led to things like the Beer Hall Putsch, or the Munich Putsch, aka Hitler's rise to fame, um, fame, and what he did to begin it. And in fact, what resulted in him in prison writing Mein Kampf, one of the most interesting books to read, I think. Then... He also wanted self-determination to be put in place. Now, we know what this is. We've spoken about it in previous uh, videos, how it was basically each colony could decide what it wanted to be. So, in theory, the Caribbean could be whatever it wanted to be. Um, Africa could do whatever it wanted to. India, in fact, since it was technically a British colony. And, of course, we've spoken about how France and Britain would not be happy about this since they had been a colonial empire for hundreds of years starting from the days of Christopher Columbus up until the end of World War II, really. So hundreds of hundreds of years of colonialism would have potentially been ended with Wilson's 14 points. And in fact, you could say that the start of the end of the colonial era was with Wilson. He also wanted Alsace-Lorraine to be returned to France. That was rich in oil and coal. Not really oil, more coal. He also wanted all countries to work on disarmament. However, 
Due to France's fear, only the defeated countries worked on it, which made Germany even more resentful. He also wanted a treaty that would punish Germany, but not leave it resentful. So very similar to Lloyd George in the fact that he didn't want a resentful Germany as he knew that it could result in another world war and potentially Germany winning that, which they kind of nearly did. However, like we spoke about, the American public did not want to be involved in any of this. It's the same reason they didn't want to be involved really in World War One until things like the sinking of the Lusitania and the unrestricted submarine warfare that Germany was um, employing on America. So again, isolationist views put so much time um, constraint on America and it was another reason why America never joined the League of Nations. I hope you guys found this video helpful. I tried to keep it within the 10 minute time limit. I know it's going to be about a minute over, but I hope you found it helpful. I certainly think it will be helpful and I hope it will help you understand what the what came out of the treaty based on what the leaders wanted. Thank you. Don't forget to like and subscribe.